Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission has appealed the judgment of the election petition tribunal that nullified the victory of Ashun State Governor Ademola Adeleke in the July 16 governorship poll. In the notice of appeal dated 30 January 2023, filed before the Court of Appeal Accra Division, obtained in Oshubo, the Commission listed 44 grounds of appeal and asked the Court to set aside the judgment of the Tribunal. Now, the appellant also asked the Court to dismiss the petition filed by the All Progressives Congress and each candidate at the poll, Adigboyega Oyetola, for lacking in merit. A tribunal panel led by Justice Stacey Akume had nullified Adeleke's victory and declared Oyetola as the duly elected governor at the polls in its judgment of January the 27th. The panel said overvoting was established in 74 or 744 polling units and deducted the excess vote from the vote garnered by Adeleke and Oyetola. But in a minority judgment delivered by another member of the panel, Justice A. Obuli, he dismissed APC's petition and upheld Adeleke's victory at the polls. We're now being joined by Johnson Agu, a legal practitioner with uh, Fidelis Audita and Co. Chambers. Many thanks for joining us on the news now on PLOS TV Africa. Thank you so much. All right, uh, this story is just breaking and uh, INEC has actually listed out 44 uh, grounds uh, which is basing its um, appeal on. Um, how do you see this grant? Do uh, you really think um, INEC could actually have um, its time in court? Yeah, it's a basic right of every appellant to be had in court, expounding the reasons why it is dissatisfied with the judgment that it's appealing. Mm. That's the very first basic. So unless it commits some procedural errors, mm. which uh, the court considers grievous enough to prevent the court from going to the merits of the case. Because in some occasions, despite how beautiful your case may be, mm -hmm. you are still expected to come to the court properly, what we call procedural jurisdiction. Mm. All right, let me just quote some, um, um, some things that are disclosed in the notice of appeal. It said that um, the verdict cannot be said to be a majority one uh, since the second judge, Rabiu Bashir, failed to pronounce uh, his opinion, neither was, or her opinion, whether or not, neither was her name written on the said judgment. Does that really uh, amount to anything? It's, it's neither here or there. Mm. Look at it this way. The law requires every judge that sits in a panel to yes. deliver an opinion. It's expected that they could deliver it orally. If they are absent, they could get someone to read it for them. Okay. Yes. But they must say their view of the matter they have had. So in this instance, the records show that someone delivered the first one, Justice mm. Tese read the first one, which we are assuming to be the majority view. Mm. Another person read the second one, Justice Obuli read the second one. Mm. So where is the judgment of ju um, Rabi? Uh, Rabi, yes. Mm. Kume has delivered, we have yeah. seen his. Where is that of uh, Kume? Mm. The, um, Rabi. Rabi. It is not compulsory that he will write an elaborate thing. He could just say, I concur. Mm. So concur being a concurring justice doesn't really need uh, a lot, but you just have to show it. Okay. Of course, I must also accept that the uh, Constitution requires the judgments to be in writing. Okay. But the question is, must it be in writing on the day it is being pronounced? You still have seven days after the judgment is delivered to receive a written copy of the judgment. So the okay. question is not that straightforward. It's a question of fact, what actually happened. Right. We will still have to listen to uh, the respondent, mm -hmm. the, this time around APC and uh, Oetola, give us their view of what happened on that day. But on the face of it, there is some argument to say that if Justice Rabi mm. did not deliver an opinion, yes. then there is no majority view. Mm. It will now be a question of, uh, what Justice Kume said mm. uh, as, uh, against what Justice Oboli said. Mm. But there has to be a, break, a tiebreaker. All right. What does Justice Rabi, Rabi okay, say? Okay, let, more, more uh, uh, notices here. It stated that the tribunal erred in law, having mm. failed to rule on the preliminary objection filed by the first respondent and appellant challenging the competency of the petition and jurisdiction of the tribunal to hear the petition only to proceed to rule on the merits of the petition. Yeah, it's expected that every application, whether you call it preliminary objection, any other name you decide mm. to call it, must be given 
evade it. So the courts are not allowed to gloss over any right. application at all. But the, there is actually something curious about this. I'm not trying to discuss the merit of INEX appeal at this mm -hmm. stage, right. but I think if I recollect cor correctly, some part of the judgment I read um, used a one line or two sentences to dismiss the entire preliminary okay. objection. So I consider it to be a verdict. The only question now is that they are supposed to give reasons for giving that verdict on All those right. preliminary objections. Mm -hmm. And if you read further in the um, grounds of appeal, mm -hmm. INEC also complains that their preliminary objections were dismissed by a one-liner. Okay. So, so you cannot say it was not uh, uh, decided on and say it is uh, decided on. At the same time, you have to choose one. What happened to your preliminary objections? Mm -hmm. so, but this is not a stage for us to criticize the the case of INEC at this mm. time, maybe at the proper forum, the proper parties will advance proper argument. And probably when they I itemize or argue their case in what we call the brief of argument, mm. will understand fully what they wanted to say in those grounds of appeal. All right, uh, before we leave uh, the Oshun Tribunal issue and INEC's um, um, appeal, uh, INEC is also seeking an order of the court uh, dismissing and or striking out the petition for want of competence and jurisdiction and an order dismissing the petition of the first and second respondent in the appeal as lacking in merit with substantial cause. Uh, there's an issue of competence and jurisdiction here at play. Yes, uh, both of them are often mistaken to be same. Mm. The question is when you bring your case before the court, has it passed through the normal procedures? If it has not passed through the normal procedures, we say it is incompetent. Mm. If its form, if the way it should look, the features it should have are not present, we say it is incompetent. If what you are asking the court to do for you is beyond the powers of the court, we will say the court has no jurisdiction to entertain it. Mm. So these are elements of all the same thing, sometimes substantive jurisdiction and sometimes procedural jurisdiction. So what INEC is complaining about is that the petition brought by Adele um, Oyetola and APC has some features which, if you look at it properly, the court should not have assumed jurisdiction, mm. even if it has. Okay. All right, uh, let's just leave the Oshun petition and um, INEX um, appeal uh, for uh, one um, second and talk about um, some other issue that um, is on the leap, uh, lips of um, most Nigerians, which is um, the, the old Naira notes validity and the Supreme Court's um, ruling of today restraining INEC from implementing deadline. Uh, it has actually sparked um, reaction and mixed reactions. Um, a lot of Nigerians are saying that um, it is a step in the right direction uh, because uh, people are still struggling to really uh, get to meet their transactions, as it were. But civil societies today, uh, they protested, and um, they're saying um, the Supreme Court has no jurisdiction. They just want you to break it down for us. Okay, actually, this item of jurisdiction mm. is very tricky. The courts, is established by law. Mm. And this law that established each of these courts donates the, to the courts the powers, the list of items they can hear. Mm. So in the case of the Supreme Court, the Constitution basically says that you should listen to appeals. Mm. That's complaint on the judgments of the Court of Appeal. Yes. But in some rare occasions, it says it can hear a matter fresh between the parties. Mm. So that's the one they call original jurisdiction. All right. So before you can invoke which, what we are calling the original jurisdiction of the court, there are certain thresholds that mm. must be met. So in this instance, people are complaining and saying, is this a proper case where the original jurisdiction of the court should be activated? Can Nasrawa State, Kaduna State, and um, Kogi, Kogi State. State ask the court to hear a matter between its own grievance or mm. the grievance of the citizens of the states mm. against an agency of the federal government. There mm. are, maybe this is not a proper time to discuss it because of mm. the, the fact that it is pending before the court, but on the face of it, it is easy to point out that the Supreme Court will normally say to litigants of those nature to go to the federal high court and complain against the acts of the federal government agency that you feel dissatisfied with. Mm. There are so many examples of such cases, AG of Anambra State against AG of the Federation. Mm. So many, too many. 
All right, the, this uh, uh, temporary ruling, as it mm. were, is just um, giving Nigerians um, maybe, as it were, just like extra five days uh, of uh, the meantime, because uh, it's not like a complete uh, relief. Uh, relief, as it were. Mm. How do you, what do you really see happening in the coming days? Uh, it's quite tricky because um, normally, when a court gives an order, mm. it's expected that everybody will comply. But we've seen situations where people will file um, um, documents, what we call an appeal, if it's a court that has an appellate opportunity, yeah. or an application to set aside that um, order that has been made. And in the guise of challenging that court order, they will say it is not binding on them, and they continue to do what they yeah. want to be doing. So. Uh, and in this particular instance, people will claim that there is a court of competent jurisdiction that has already made an order mm. compelling CBN and whatever not to stop. Mm. There is also an argument that CBN was not even a party to the case between the state government and Attorney General of the Federation. So mm. the question is whether it will be bound by a case that uh, it was not a party to. So it's mm. a lot of arguments surrounding it. So we are looking forward to see if this uh, uh, Buhari administration will at least pretend to be a, 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 a government of rule of law mm. and say, okay, let's hold on a little and see right. if by the hearing of the application for real injunction, what we are calling the interlocutory injunction, mm. the court will discharge this so-called interim injunction mm. or reaffirm it. All right. So, but there's still an opportunity for the parties to present their opinions before the final decision on whether the... Uh, the demon demonetization policy yeah. we go on or not. Or not. Yep. All right. We must say a very big thank you to you, uh, Johnson Algo, uh, lawyer with the Fidelis uh, Auditor and Co-Chambers. We do appreciate your time and the insight that you have provided to these um, salient issues uh, uh, bordering Nigeria and Nigerians. Thank you so much. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.